Howdy, folks. I'm John Daly. I'm Amber. And here's What's My Line! Now you're, like, <laughs> plagiarizing. Now I'm plagiarizing? Like, that's somebody else, and you stole their <laughs> TV show. I Yes, I've stolen their TV show. Today we're going to guess what people's jobs are. We're going to start with our first lovely contestant. She hails all the way from Maine. And uh, we're going to be guessing what her job is. So, if uh, our first contestant will please sign in. Are you talking about me? <laughs> All right, let's get started. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for calling my dad's girlfriend his mistress? My mom died of a brain aneurysm two years ago. She was 39 at the time. She, she and dad, Ben, a 42-year-old male, we're no longer together before she died because dad had an affair with his work colleague, Amanda, a 37-year-old female. They were getting a divorce, but mom died before it was finalized. I was 18 when my mom died, and to be honest, I resented my dad because of the heartache he caused my mother, and I blame him for her death. After mom's funeral, I refused to talk to him until he contacted me, and we started to reconnect. He and Amanda are still together, and I have started to accept the relationship because I saw how happy my father is with her. Last month, Dad informed me that he and Amanda had gotten engaged and wanted to let me know first before they shared the news with everyone else. I told him I am happy for them. Last week, they had an engagement party, and they invited some of our relatives and friends. During the toast, Dad said something like, I just can't wait to marry the perfect woman. I thank God for giving me the love of my life after all those years that I wasted with someone else. Classy. Stay classy, Dad. You are so class. Such a class act. I walked out of the room after hearing what my father said. He basically considered his marriage to my late mother a waste of his time. It broke my heart and I wanted to leave right away, but my dad's friends, my godfather, and Amanda followed me. Amanda said that dad wants me to give a message, but I told her that I can't and that I need to go and I feel sick. My godfather tried to convince me to stay and say a few words. I got tired of holding my anger in and I just said, I have no good words to say about my cheating father and his mistress. I need to go. Amanda got angry with me and called me a jerk and that I need to get over the past. I didn't even say anything, I just left them behind. I was with my boyfriend who picked me up when dad called and he was very furious with me. Apparently what I said made Amanda cry and now he's demanding an apology. He also accused me of ruining his engagement party. There's one person who ruined your engagement party <laughs> and it wasn't OP. I told him that I could have made a scene, but I didn't, and there's no way I'm apologizing for stating facts. Am I the jerk? Did I overreact and ruin the party? My boyfriend says he understands how I feel, but my grandparents, dad's side, are disappointed with me for overreacting and calling Amanda a mistress. OP, if the shoe fits, wear it. If you don't want to be called a mistress, then maybe don't have an affair. The truth hurts sometimes, and I think, you know, the thing is that you would have been civil. You would have been willing to bury the hatchet. But your dad went ahead and said some, something that was completely inappropriate, and he had no right to say that. And knowing especially that you were there, what was he trying to do? Provoke you? I don't know. This this seems absolutely nuts to me that this your father would say something like this. Like, calling all those years with your mother a waste of time is just the lowest blow. Plain and simple. So no, I don't think that you're the jerk in this situation. I think they got what they deserved here. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. What he said was disgusting. Garbage. You didn't ruin it. You tried to walk away and people tried to stop you. F them. I'm so sorry that you had to witness that. Right, there was no reason to mention his first marriage at all. He could have just talked about Amanda and how happy he was to marry her. Not the jerk. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for calling my husband an idiot for putting all of my ground coffee into one container? I just thought this one sounded like a fun one to read. Amber was telling me about it. <laughs> and uh, the moment she read the title, I was like, 
What an idiot. <laughs> I'm a 30-year-old female, and I'm an all-time coffee drinker. I have favorites, but I also like to drink any type of coffee available. I bought a grinder that I use to grind coffee beans that I purchase freshly from the market. I store each of my type of ground coffee in a separate container. I have black, Arabica, Robust. I also drink Italian and Turkish coffee, which are costly. I grind my coffee in advance to be able to drink it on the go, whether in the morning before going to work or later when I'm too busy to start the grinder. My husband can be a bit of an ignorant type when it comes to coffee types. He has one and only favor and that's it. He doesn't even try other types, just sticks to the regular. On to the situation, a few days ago I went shopping to buy coffee beans to grind and store for later. I put each type of coffee ground into a separate container and marked them by outlining a sticker in each container in the lid like Italian and Turkish. I had a total of four separate containers and put them in the cupboard like I usually do and went about my day. Tuesday evening I returned from work and my husband was already home. I didn't notice anything was wrong till I walked into the kitchen and found my coffee containers gone. Only one big glass jar was in its place and it had coffee in it. I immediately asked my husband about it and he nonchalantly said that he ran out of jars for his gardening project and took my coffee containers after moving it all to a bigger jar to save the containers. I was stunned. I flipped out and said that he shouldn't have done all that and put all the coffee grounds together as I had different types. I flat out called him an idiot because it should have been obvious to him that all four of my containers of coffee look different. He argued that he'd seen me mix coffee sometimes, but that's totally different since I add specific amounts to balance the mix. He said it wasn't a huge deal and that I could go buy new coffee beans or roast coffee if I had no time since my ground coffee is the same we find in grocery stores. I yelled at him that I was out both money and time and effort into this and that he should have gone to the gardening center instead of using my containers and mixing all of my coffee. He apologized but said I hurt him by calling him an idiot when I was trying to decorate our kitchen window. We haven't talked since then, but he keeps saying that I overreacted and offered to pay for new coffee beans but still thinks the coffee should have been drinkable. I don't think he understands, but also feel like I went off on him harshly. All right, OP, you know, I mean, I think that your husband may have uh, been severely misguided in this situation. And I don't, I mean, it just seems like he gave no consideration as to whether this would be, you know, an inconvenience to you. And I think that's probably the most frustrating thing here is he didn't think about you in all of this. All he thought about was the project that he had to do and he just was like, oh, I have this project to do. Well, I'm going to take these containers and mix them together because eh, why not? Well, why not? So, uh, you know, I mean, anyone who has drink and, drank coffee before and different flavors of coffee knows that there are certain blends of coffee that don't necessarily taste good together. And you don't want to necessarily take them and mix them all together. It's, it, it's mind boggling that he would think that this was acceptable. Like, if you had wanted them all in the same container, you would have put them all in the same container. <laughs> you know, we, yeah. and he just kind of took away your agency there. And, uh, you know, was like, oh, you just have to live with the, the, the mix of coffee that you have here. So, yeah, I, I think this was pretty inconsiderate of him. What do you folks think? I'm not the jerk, and I don't even like coffee. Not the jerk, he knew exactly what he was doing. They were labeled, and you can't tell me that you two are married and he doesn't know you enjoy mixing and experiencing different blends. This was so disrespectful, and intentionally so. Yeah, the name calling wasn't great, but seriously, did he expect you to be happy with what he did? No, he did not. This, it's not a mistake to mix four separate labeled containers together. Husband knew exactly what he was doing, and he did it deliberately. Was it malicious? Probably not, but it wasn't a mistake. OP has every right to be angry and flip out, but calling her husband an idiot to his face was wrong and should apologize to him and explain why she's upset. Husband is lazy for not going to the shop and buying a proper set of pots for his plants and a jerk for being demeaning towards her coffee addiction. Anyone with half a brain knows not to mess around with someone else's coffee. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for how I reacted to my friend's wedding speech? 
I got married two weeks ago to my husband. He is the love of my life. We've been together for five years. It was a small ceremony. It wasn't entirely traditional, but it was mostly per his culture. The reception was small, 30 people, but more Western. Neither my husband and I care much about weddings. We wanted to spend our lives together and have plans, and that means legal arrangement is necessary. And cultural ceremony was a big deal for his traditional mother. It's not a Western wedding, so there were no best mans or maids of honors or anything. I invited some family and friends, as did he. The way my husband and I met is a little embarrassing. It's funny in the way a lot of embarrassing stories can be years later, but I'm uncomfortable talking about it with people I'm not close to. And the nature of our encounter means his family doesn't know exactly how we met. They would definitely frown upon it. I'm not ashamed of it, but I am embarrassed about it. One of my friends joked that they would talk about how we met in their speech. I said that one, I didn't want any wedding speeches except by the fathers as per the ceremony's cultural traditions. And two, I hated talking about how we met in public. And my friend knows this. I have shut down their attempt to talk about it with people that I'm not close with before. They also know his parents and family don't really know how we met. During the more Western style reception, my friend had the music stop, clinked their glass, and gave a speech talking about how we met. My parents are laid back and didn't care. My father already knew, and his father, who is also laid back, managed to calm down his very traditional conservative mother, who was furious, and my husband has been scolded by and has had to stop her from scolding me. Our siblings are our age and didn't care, but extended and older family was not happy about it. It was a scene. The room literally fell completely silent as my friend spoke. I was very angry. I asked them to immediately leave. I had them escorted when they didn't. And the reception was cut short because of the mood change. I haven't spoken to my friends since the day after when I explained in tears how hurt I was. I did not receive an apology and I haven't spoken to them since. Other friends were on my side at first, but it's been nearly three weeks since the incident and they are telling me to forgive at this point. I don't know if I ever will. They say that I have the right to be hurt and I'm overreacting and going too far with it. And that these kinds of embarrassing stories are told all the time at wedding receptions. I think that I communicated clearly that I didn't want it and my discomfort about the topic was clear before we even decided to get married. Am I the jerk? And uh, so this story actually has a little bit more to it, and I think Amber was telling me about that. And so this little bit of information is relevant. Amber was telling me about this, so I'm going to read it. Info, can you tell us a story of how you met? I'm just really curious. And OP replies, I'd prefer not to get specific. We met in a local BDSM scene, and my friend told the exact story in explicit, disgusting detail. Hopefully that gives some idea about how scandalous this was. This was not your friend's place. <laughs> this was not your friend's place at all. This isn't a real friend. This is a frenemy. They knew that this would be embarrassing. And this isn't the kind of story that you would tell during a ceremony. So yeah, I, I can't blame you for being upset about this. And I can't blame you for being angry that they did this. So yeah, I don't think that you're the jerk. Well, I'm actually very close to the end here, and so my computer is kind of freaking out, and it's overheated, so you're going to have to apologize about the, like, choppy video here at the end. Not the jerk, you told your friends several times not to talk about this. A wedding ceremony is not the time or place to reveal such info. Your friend has not apologized. Had they apologized, I may retract this point, but they haven't, so you being mad is still justified. Edit, when I made this comment, OP hadn't put out the backstory of how they met, or what the friend had said. Point two was just based off of how OP described the family's response and embarrassment to it. The backstory made point two so unbelievably applicable, there should have been a disclaimer. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.